What's going on, beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. I'm Mia. And today is a very special day because we are in Portland, Oregon, and we're working in 4K. That's right, guys. We are bringing you 4K for our episodes now. Uh, we are at Gigantic Brewing. This is a brewery that we've heard a ton about. I'm super excited. Mia, are you ready? Yes. Let's stop talking, Jeff. All right. Let's have some beer. Um, Je Jeff, come get me down. Come get me down. here at Gigantic Brewing. We started back in uh, 2011 and Van and I were both brewing uh, for different companies. He was at Rock Bottom and I was at Hopworks and uh, I had wanted to get my own brewery going. Uh, Van was, you know, kind of interested in that, not necessarily, but basically uh, we knew each other. We were both on the board of the Oregon Brewers Guild and knew each other through the industry and it kind of happened that uh, Van ended up getting uh, unceremoniously fired from rock bottom uh, for having an opinion that they didn't care for and uh, at his uh, going away party his last day party then I was like I was like hey we should just like let's get together and start our own brewery and then we put together a goal for getting it funded uh, which uh, we man I think we got it funded in about five weeks uh, pretty quickly I mean we were both uh, I've been brewing now to the 2020, I've been brewing for four, no, 16 years. The man's been brewing for a little over 20. So uh, even eight years ago, you know, we were kind of known quantities in the Oregon beer scene. Uh, I mean, the audience that we have here, it's a lot of locals and a lot of regulars. Uh, that's probably, uh, it was surprising for us just because, you know, we're in a light industrial neighborhood. You know, we have a door manufacturing company uh, next door. Uh, and some other industrial businesses, the guys that like give us our towels or across the street, you know, industrial laundry, essentially. Uh, so we weren't quite sure uh, what the crowd would be like, but uh, but there's a whole, there's a big apartment complex here. There's a lot of residential that's just up the street. And so all those people, we basically became a local pub for them. If you were coming to Portland, I guess, um, what would be the reason you come here? I mean, we make good beer, but there's a lot of people in this town that make good beer. Uh, we got a cool scene. Uh, there's a lot of cool scenes in town. I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, one of the great things about Portland is that there's awesome beer everywhere. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you go, you're gonna find incredible beer, uh, even at dive bars and strip clubs. And you know, I mean, they all have incredible beer selections. You know, we're at uh, I think it's like 80% of the draft beer sold in Oregon, obviously pre-COVID, was uh, craft beer. So it's ubiquitous here. So I would say, hey, if you come to Portland, then please come see us. We make some awesome beers. And this is the place where you can get it from the source at the freshest. Uh, but also, Portland's just a great town to come hang out in. And there's a lot of great beer here. So just come to Portland. So my favorite beer at this brewery to drink right now is the Project Pilsner. We started brewing Project Pilsner earlier this year. And uh, every time we do it, it's a different beer with a different single hop. So right now, uh, it's the Lotus Hop. Uh, previously it was Galaxy and before that it was Citra and then uh, coming up we'll have uh, Crystal and Mosaic and then who knows you know as we continue on but it's just you know it's it's nice and hoppy it's got that nice uh, like bitterness bitter backbone like a German Pilsner but then it's got the citrusy hops uh, but it's not it's not a IPA Pilsner it's definitely still a Pilsner you know uh, so it's, it's delicious.
All right, guys, it's uh, time to get these beers started. Me and I actually had 12 beers poured. We're gonna see how many we get through. Uh, my first beer up is called Kolsch Tastic. It is a 5% Kolsch. And uh, one of the reasons why I picked this, because I always say Maltastic, and so it just kind of stood out to me. And uh, I mean, a lighter beer is a great way to start. So here we go, cheers. Yeah, this is everything that you would want to look for in a Kolsch. Um, slightly bready, crackery, uh, super crisp, super dry finish, um, light. This is something where on a hot day you could probably down a few of these. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, I'm going to finish it absolutely no problem. It is in fact Kolsch-tastic, so proper name. All right, everyone, so my first beer is called Project Pills. It comes in at 5.2, and I wanted to start light because I'm a lightweight. Okay, cheers. The aroma's kind of soft but sweet. It's, it's light. Soft, light, all those words, um, but it's a... It's a nice smell. Mm. So this is um, a hoppier pills. It's a uh, lotus hops, and it's um. Mm. That's finishing nicely. Okay, Jeff, you're going to taste this. This is good. Um, it has. It has a little bit of a kick, but it's also a little sweet, a little candied sweet, but not super sugary, it wouldn't say that. Um, and then there's a soft kind of vanilla-y flavor. This is wonderful. I'd be down to uh, have a, a big old pour of this. I don't want to say this is my favorite yet. I know we haven't done that in a while, but like, you know, this one might be it. Okay. All right, so the next beer up I had to pick because it's called Sassy Pony, and it's a 6.5% uh, pale ale. Uh, the first thing I notice is this is unfiltered, uh, very unfiltered, actually. It almost, almost is hazy. I can just barely see through it, especially if I hold it up to the sunlight. So anyways, uh, ready for some hops while I'm here in Portland, so let's go. Cheers. Mm. It's got nice tropical fruit on the front. You're getting a little bit of like melon and then like some overripe pineapple, uh, maybe some papaya in there. But the thing that I really like about this beer is it's light drinking. It's 5.6%, but it's got a nice danky finish. I mean, ooh, I can feel that resin on the back of my tongue. It's sitting there for a while. I would say it probably was a mistake making this beer number two. Uh, but luckily we got some water to wash down some of these flavors with and uh, plenty of beer as well. So uh, this was this was really good. Um, if I wanted something with just like, like a potent hop flavor, maybe I didn't want to get drunk and I just wanted to have a couple beers but feel like I had five, this would be the one I would go for. I really enjoy this one. My next one is a tropical IPA coming in at 6.3. It's called Hold Tight. Has one little bird in yet? Uh, Ooh, very tropical on the nose. Uh, a lot of stone fruit you're getting right off, right off the top. It's a very pretty color as well. A nice deep gold. Let's see if I need a hold tight after this one. Am I right? Oh yeah, that's very juicy. But. It's not like super sweet juicy, it's not like you're having a glass of orange juice, but it's, it's like just a bunch of sweet tropical flavors kind of swirling around in your mouth, and then a nice clean hop that goes through it. This is good too, and it, it, it feels pretty light, I mean 6.3 that's not 
the heaviest IPA, so this is a nice balance of you're getting a little bit of a weightier beer than like the Pilsner I had. Um, yeah. And look at that little lacing. That's always fun. It's always just fun to play with your beer, right? Play with your food, play with your beer. Here we go. Well, the next beer up, surprise, surprise, is a hazy IPA. This is called Cloudberries. It is 7.5% and it is indeed hazy. Um, one thing I want to point out is their tap handles here at the brewery has some really awesome artwork and this one in particular was really, really cool. I'll make sure I show it in the B-roll so you guys can see it. Um, but I'm already kind of sold and I haven't even tried the beer yet. So here we go. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what hops they're using for this. Cause it does straight up taste like berries, but it doesn't have any artificial flavoring or anything like that. It's just kind of berry flavored hops. I do remember, isn't there a hop variety called like African Queen or something like that that's got berries in it? I think it's some, I, I think there is a hop variety called African Queen or something like that that has berry flavors in it. Could be that. Um, Medusa hops maybe, um, but man, trucks are loud. <laughs> but man, what I, what I can tell you is this is really light drinking. Nothing, nothing so far has been overly hoppy, you know, on my palate. Um, the pale ale definitely stuck on my palate a little bit longer, but a little bit of water and I was ready to rock and roll. Um, but damn, this is, this is good. This is easy drinking, 7.5%. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, my next beer is called Rainbow Supreme because I am a supreme rainbow. And it is a hazy IPA coming in, coming in at 7.5. I'm not getting too much on the nose. I don't know if that's because it's like super filled up. I haven't had a chance to swirl it, but not a lot on the nose. So let's see what's going on inside the little guy. It's a very soft tropical journey on the palate, if you will. Light hops on the end. Um, pretty soft mouthfeel. You're getting a little bit of citrus, a little bit of stone fruit in it. Um, it's decent. It's decent. Well, my friends, the next beer up, we're going into sour territory. This is called Fantastic Voyage. It is a 6.6% Brett Saison that is oak aged and with whole melon hops. Uh, they got me with the hops. They got me with the oak aged. You know me and sours. So Brett, I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Jacob would be mad if I didn't. So uh, let's go ahead and dig in, see how it is. Cheers. this is just the aroma alone is fantastic you're really getting just the brett aromas coming out of it but you're also getting like this slight sweet fruity tone i don't know if i can necessarily pinpoint like a melon aroma but it smells great you're getting some nice oak aromas as well like like almost like sweet vanilla wood uh it's it's really good so i'm gonna dig in cheers So I got a couple things to say about this beer. One, it definitely has that whole melon flavor and it definitely holds the characteristics of a oak-aged beer. Um, 
I gotta talk about the Brett a little bit, and this is coming from somebody that, you know, isn't necessarily a big fan of, like, the funky style beers. This beer up front is really good, because you get a lot of sweetness up front. You get a little bit of that, like, fruity character from the whole melon. Uh, you get a lot of the oak character. But as it settles on my tongue and as the beer dissipates and I'm just left with the residual flavor on my palate, I get that that like band-aidy hospital -y glove kind of flavor and I know some people dig that it's just not my thing um, this is one that I think maybe Jacob would enjoy uh, just probably not my favorite the aroma though whew, this smells lovely um, and like I said the upfront flavor is fantastic I just I don't know if I like that that band-aid aftertaste it's just it's not my jam but, you know, worth a try. I'm happy I tried it. All right, next up is Catherine the Wampus. Like the Wampus Cat. Um, that, this is an IPA coming in at 7.6. I'm, I'm not too fond of cats, but hopefully I will be fond of this beer. It's kind of malty on the nose. A malty citrus. Like if you were to bake bread with uh, some like rind or citrus in it. Oh, that's just that's just citrus. Citrus, not too hoppy, smooth. I will say that these IPAs that they have are pretty smooth. Um, they're not rough they're not wrecking your palate you could probably finish one and have a second one and not feel like blown away and sad that you did that so yeah and then check check that out that's nice whoa there's a, a nice white lacing on that this is solid if you like I feel like I, they didn't list what the hops are in it. It's like all their hops and their IPAs are secrets. But that's fine. Then it just helps us to guess and to try to be more knowledgeable about what hops we're drinking. <laughs> so that's always good for us. But I feel like it's a citrus hop. And yeah, like I said, it, it's a soft, um, pretty straightforward IPA, but it's good. Well, the next beer up is something kind of strange and out there. Uh, this is called Pipe Wrench. It's a gin barrel aged IPA sitting at 8.0%. I had to throw the zero in there and I'm going to throw it in the description too because why not? <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever had a gin barrel aged IPA. In fact, I've probably only had a handful of gin barrel aged beers and I have two on my lineup. This is one of them. So 8% gin barrel aged beer. We're in Portland, so let's do it weird. Cheers. Ooh. Hmm. Huh. You know, guys, I wasn't expecting to like this. I'm not a huge gin fan, but there's something really weird about this, and I really like it. Um, something about the gin uh, mixing with the hops, you get like this nice, like, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the words. Um, you just get like this nice balance between the gin flavor and the hop profile. It's bitter, but not too bitter. Uh, you kind of get everything. You get the malts, you get the gin, you get the hops, and they, they actually blend really well, and it creates something that's very unique. Like, back home, we don't have gin barrel-aged IPAs. That's insane. Uh, but apparently insanity works sometimes. This would be one where if I wanted to go to a bottle share and, and share something really unique with all my friends, this would be the beer I would bring, just because it's fun and it's a great conversation piece, and it's surprisingly enjoyable, actually. I would almost say that I might go home and encourage some of my local breweries to go ahead and take their shot at one of these, because, wow, I'm impressed. 
All right, next up is another IPA. I feel like I've been having quite a few IPAs, but that's all right. This one is a little clearer. This is called Gigantic IPA, and this is coming in right under 7%, 6.9. It's a nice golden color. So, let's see what this one is about. Again, I will say their IPAs are not aggressive. So, if, if you shy away from IPAs because you think that they are just going to have a war in your mouth that you will not win, don't be frightened of Gigantic. This is soft, it is slightly hoppy, and you do get a nice malt finish on the back end. Um, I think this is a good representation. I mean, they named it Gigantic IPA. He got there. He got there. So I don't think it's like gigantic in the sense of it's going to knock you over and you won't be able to walk. I think it's gigantic in here's how we want to represent ourselves. And this IPA is a, like I said, a good representation of maybe what the base of their IPAs are. And I'm for it. I think this is wonderful. This is a good way to introduce people into IPAs if you don't like them necessarily, which I do. So this isn't a problem for me. So wonderful. Cheers. Well, guys, I'm down to my final beer and, uh, it's another gin barrel aged beer. This is actually called Tangerine Supreme. It's a gin barrel aged beer. Not really a style explained, but it's uh, brewed with tangerine and blood oranges. I love my citrus fruit, so I sat there and said, you know, if I'm gonna be weird in Portland, I might as well try something with gin in it and uh, play it safe with some fruits that I know I'll probably enjoy. So let's give it a shot, cheers. Okay, so this one, this gin beer is definitely a lot more gin forward. You don't have the hops like competing with it to kind of like create some like cohesive hot mess of awesome. Uh, I mean, if you like gin and you're maybe not a big beer fan, I think you'd really enjoy this. To me, it, it, <laughs> it's weird. It, gin's weird in beer, guys. Gin's weird in beer, but I mean, I'm not mad at it. Um, it kind of tastes like somebody poured a shot of gin in a Tangerine Express IPA from Stone. Like, that's that's what I'm picturing right now. It, I, I wouldn't say it, it's not enjoyable. If you like gin, you're going to like it. But it's definitely more gin forward than anything else. I do love the tangerine and the blood orange. I love citrus fruit. Can't go wrong with citrus fruit. Uh, but I would say that this probably isn't the first one I would reach for. Okay, I've come to my final beer, and I decided to go out with a fun color. This is such a lovely red. This is called Hascap Sour, coming in at 5.6. And Hascap is like a honeysuckle kind of berry. So, I mean, the color kind of invites you right into that. Um, so let's see what this one's about. Ooh, sweet, a little bit tart on the nose. I'm very excited for this one. It's going to be, I can already tell, a, a, a nice change from the IPAs, essentially, what I've been having today. Mmm. Yeah. That's, that's just like a berry tart sour. Mmm. Yeah, that is a nice shift from the IPAs I've been having. Not that they were bad, they were good. I'm saying, sometimes you gotta change it up, you know? Like, when I go out clubbing, I can't just dance to one genre all night. I gotta switch it up, I gotta do salsa, I gotta do some twerking, 
I got to do some EDM, just like dance by myself kind of stuff. You got to mix it up. So this was a good way to end. Um, yeah, uh, one more sip so I can talk more about it. It's a good balance of sweet and tart. Some people don't like sours because they're sour. <laughs> but this is a good in-between. I feel like this is a good in-between for IPAs and I guess a sour. Um, I know Jeff had a little bit more of a funky time with his uh, flight, but this isn't overbearing to where if you drink all of it, then you're just going to be like dried out. So, lovely. Another another swing and a hit, Gigantic. Cheers! Alright guys, well we finished our own flights, so now we're gonna sit back and try each other's flights, and then we're gonna pick our favorite and tell you all about it. Yeah. So, sit back and watch us and enjoy for roughly 20 seconds. <laughs> Alright. Well guys, we have literally tried all the beers here, um, except for a stout on nitro. Which we might try. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to tell you which beer was our favorite. So Mia, do you want to go first? I will. Uh, ladies first. So I chose Project Pills because it was such an adventure. There were a lot of different notes. A lot of things to kind of pick up on. It was hoppy, but light. It was fun. I just really liked the entire time I had with the beer. So I decided to get a larger experience with said beer. So that was mine. What about yours, Jeffies? Well, you first have? off, I do have to tip my hat to uh, this Project Pills. Uh, this particular version was brewed with Lotus Hops. And uh, I don't think I've ever had Lotus Hops before. So I do have to also give a shout out to the Pipe Wrench IPA, um, that Jim Barrel Aged IPA. It was super unique, very weird. Gin is not like a liquor that I ever reach for, which I hardly ever reach for liquor, but if I do, it's like whiskey or bourbon. Um, it, it was unique, it was, it was just bizarre, but I felt like the hops, the malts and the gin did something together that wasn't familiar when it comes to craft beer, but I actually kind of enjoyed it a bit. Yeah. Um, but in all honesty, there, there's one beer that just, to me, it, it just stood out from aroma to flavor to finish. And it's one that Mia picked out. <sighs> Super it's hold, duper. It's Hold Tight IPA. And uh, man, the only way I can put it is it's just tropical tasty goodness um for people that live in oc that watch this show uh if you guys have ever had uh thai tea far out ipa from bootleggers very reminiscent of that it's just man i don't know it's just good just tropical juicy easy to drink if you come to portland i honestly feel like this is one of those breweries that kind of has something for everyone Again, we didn't review the stout that they have on tap, but they also have a stout on tap. So if you're just a stout person, mm -hmm. they got you covered. And it's on nitro. So, um, but yeah, their sour game is good. Their IPA game is on point. And uh, they got crispy boys for days. I mean, Man. honestly, for me, it was really hard to choose between the two. At the end of the day, I told myself, well, I drink beer too fast. So if I'm going <laughs> to drink beer at a slower pace, it's going to need to be something that's not so sessionable and easy to drink. Jeff so. would have six of these. I would have six of those. So. Yeah, he'd be like, this is like a six pack of very light beer. And then I'd be like, it's not. And then I, I wouldn't be able to carry him home. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're going to kick back. We're going to continue to enjoy our beers. And um, yeah. I had a fun time. Yeah. All right. 
Let's get to drinking these things. Hey, cheers me. <laughs> well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode at Gigantic Brewing Company. Got to give a huge shout out to Ben and Cody. Thank you guys so much for the hospitality. The beers were awesome. And uh, wow, great time, great stories. Uh, this place is really fun, guys. If you come to Portland, you got to check it out. It's a small little space, but I think it packs a lot of uh, opportunity for some fun times with friends, good beers. Again, not aggressive, not gonna just like, pew, not gonna do that. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share with your friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. That gives us more exposure, which means more people see our channel which allows us to make more episodes just like this one. So until next time, I'm Jeff. I'm Mia. And we'll see you again on Let's, Let's Have, Have Some, Some Beer. Beer. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, what's going on, beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are in downtown Portland visiting Breakside Brewing. So if you want to check it out with us, stay tuned. <laughs>